welcome and thank you for joining us here at AAO 2016. Firstly, tell us a little bit about your background and your academic work. I am uh, Luca Gualdi, I'm a medical doctor, ophthalmologist, I work in uh, private, private practice in Rome. I'm uh, an anterior segment uh, surgeon, spe specialized in uh, refractive uh, surgery and uh, cataract. Tell us about the research that you presented here at AAO 2016. Yeah, we, we do several uh, uh, approaches for presbyopia but uh, uh, every approach is uh, surgical. So with uh, this new treatment that um, the company uh, asked to, to, to try to, for us, it was a non-invasive treatment uh, which is based on microelectro stimulation of the cerebral body. In this manner, uh, you, you can stimulate the cerebral body to contract uh, more and uh, increasing the power of uh, accommodation. As we know, um, it includes the presbyopia. Uh, the main cause is the crystalline lens uh, dysfunction. So based on uh, the, the increasing of the lens thickness, uh, stiffness, uh, and um, uh, also the, the weight, uh, the serenity muscle uh, um, cannot support anymore after the 40 years old. So uh, needs more power to, um, to move the, uh, a bigger lens. So uh, this is the basis to understand why the treatment uh, uh, works. And uh, <clears throat> it's made by treatments uh, on, uh, based on uh, microelectro stimulation um, uh, with a contact lens, which is a, a rigid scleral contact lens in 20 millimeters in polycarbonate made by four uh, three millimeters uh, electrodes uh, which are directly connected to from the core on uh, contact lens uh, with the uh, four cables and uh, uh, to a generator. Uh, the generator erogates a square wave biphasic uh, microcontinuous current for eight minutes uh, in which there are uh, two seconds of contraction followed by six seconds of rest uh, and this is for eight minutes. After the eight minutes, uh, the treatment uh, is finished and uh, you, you can uh, follow the patient, uh, the improving uh, just uh, after 12 hours. So the day after, you can see uh, the, the results. Uh, as uh, it's a uh, passive induction of stimulus, uh, uh, the treatment is not surgical. It's like to go to the gym. So you don't need only one treatment, unfortunately. And this is one limit of the, the treatment because uh, if you treat only once, uh, the, the results uh, are uh, ineffective and after 10, 15 days, uh, you lose the effect. So you have to do uh, another one near in the first uh, week or two weeks to uh, activate more the muscle. And uh, we suggest to do uh, four treatments within the, the first two months, uh, once every 10 to 15 days to activate the muscle. Once it's activated, you have to do uh, one, uh, only one treatment every almost three months to maintain the, the effect. Of course, uh, uh, it's very different uh, from the age because if you select people with the 40 years old, 42, you uh, maybe need on, only one treatment every four months. But if you select an older patient like uh, 50 years old, you may need the two treatments, uh, uh, one treatment every two months for the maintenance uh, dose. That's quite impressive data. A single treatment having persistence over weeks, sometimes months. What is your sample size in this particular study? Yes, we included uh, people between 40 and 50 years old because uh, we saw in the preliminary data that uh, if you select uh, people older than 50 years old, they have more presbyopia and the effect uh, with this treatment uh, is not uh, good. So the best selection is um, early presbyopia, 40, 50 years old, and the maximum amount of uh, uh, spheric uh, um, presbyopia for near vision has to be no more than 150, because if you treat uh, older uh, more than 150, the effect uh, is not so good, I mean, because the patient is uh, already used to to put glasses and uh, he already during the day, so the, the, the serenity muscle uh, um, doesn't contract. Uh, the effect on, on it is not, uh, not very good. It's already lazy by the, the glasses. So this particular approach is directly acting on the ciliary muscle. Mm -hmm. 
it doesn't have any impact on the lens's rigidity or uh, flexibility? No, because uh, it acts only on the muscle, but of course if, if the muscle contracts more, the lens moves uh, more. Probably in the future when uh, new uh, techniques and new um, new things are arising on the market. Uh, I know that there are drops, eye drops, uh, which uh, um, make the crystalline lens uh, uh, less uh, uh, thick and less stiff. Uh, maybe uh, with the um, enhancement of uh, uh, these drops, uh, the crystalline lens uh, can move uh, uh, as more as possible with the uh, electro-simulation plus uh, this, uh, this kind of drops, maybe. How did you come to do this particular line of research? Have you always been interested in electrical stimulation uh, in the ocular system? How did this come to you? No, at all. I, I, I don't. I, I'm a presbyopic uh, uh, surgeon, so I do uh, several approaches for presbyopia. But uh, as I know that uh, the, the results are, are very good for near vision, but for far vision uh, it's a compromise. And every treatment uh, works on pseudo accommodation, not only on not in accommodation. So uh, the best is uh, to, to find something for the patient that is safe uh, with results and doesn't affect uh, far vision. The, the worst effect then that you can have with this treatment is uh, no effect. You, you can't lose uh, anything, you cannot lose uh, vision, uh, you, it's not uh, riskful, uh, uh, there is no risk of infection because it's uh, um, external treatment, it's like uh, to put a contact lens, so you, you don't need uh, antibiotic after, uh, it's very easy, it's like to go to the gym. But what gave you the idea to do this? The idea is not mine, uh, the idea uh, was uh, the first to use electrostimulation uh, in the eye was uh, uh, more than uh, 15 years ago. In literature, there are uh, several studies about uh, um, electric uh, electricity in the eye for the study of uh, atrophy of the um, um, of the optic nerve, macular degeneration, and uh, especially glaucoma. And uh, they found that uh, because uh, the ciliary body is directly connected from the posterior part of the trabeculate by a tendon, so st by stimulating the ciliary body, uh, he found a Russian uh, ophthalmology, he found a reduction of intraocular pressure. So based on uh, this research, uh, an Italian um, inventor of this uh, machine uh, developed uh, an instrument uh, with the electro simulator and with a contact lens which changed, uh, changed uh, during the years uh, because it started 10 years ago and uh, developed uh, a machine uh, which, is, uh, which, is, which was uh, um, C marked since uh, one year uh, and a half and the company decided to, gave, uh, to, to give to us uh, for the first in Italy to study uh, why it works because uh, this Italian ophthalmology told uh, okay it works but as uh, we have a lot of diagnostic instrument uh, because we study um, cornea, crystalline lens for several approaches in our refractive surgery, they decided to give to us to, to make a protocol to see uh, which patient uh, is, uh, is the best uh, selection and uh, also to see if there, there are, are um, contraindications or uh, side effects. So we also studied, uh, for instance, uh, not only intraocular pressure or slit lamp uh, uh, by ophthalmology um, measurement and also retina, periphery of the retina, if there are any problem, no problem. We studied also the endothelial cells, uh, pre-op and post-op, to see if there is any change, uh, potential uh, effective endothelium, and there is no change. We also studied by chamfrou camera uh, the opacity, uh, the eventual opacity of the lens after the treatment, and with the dysfunctional lens uh, index, we didn't find any change of the index, that's to say that uh, the treatment is, of course, not caratogenic. Uh, or theoretically, uh, it would induce less cataract because the crystalline lens moves uh, more mm -hmm. and uh, the lens uh, mm, uh, could have uh, more vitality and uh, maybe the patient in the future uh, uh, can have uh, cataract, uh, um, not early, but... Uh, so what is your emerging view 
that this particular therapeutic approach should be used proactively for prevention or only once presbyopia sets in? Yes, theoretically um, can be used for prevention, uh, but uh, the best is uh, to start uh, when uh, the, the patients start to, to see that uh, have some problems uh, in time of accommodation of, uh, or uh, when the patient uh, want to, to see better with glasses, the best should be uh, to do the stimulation because if you start with glasses, you never come back. It's like to go uh, with the elevator <laughs> and uh, once you, you, you do the steps, uh, three, uh, three floors, and then once you, you take the elevator, oh, it's very good, the elevator, I, I want to take uh, every day the elevator. <laughs> it's the same. So how did you decide on the specific frequencies that you were going to use and the interval? Yeah, I decided uh, because the, um, the Italian inventor suggested me uh, you have to try this patient every 15 days uh, and uh, I followed his protocol uh, based on his preliminary data since uh, his studies that started in 2007. So I, I suggested him to change a little bit things uh, uh, that I, I suggested to, to, to do the treatment every uh, one, more, one uh, week, uh, especially in the activation uh, dose. And after, uh, of course, every three months almost, but depending on the answer of the patient, which is different from patient to patient. The, the question is, you've decided on certain frequencies to use, yes. so the actual electrical frequency that you've chosen, ah. and the interval between okay. those treatments. Okay, no, I didn't decide this. The, the company and the engineers yeah. decided the, the frequency, uh, two seconds of contraction and six seconds on refs, and the milliampere or voltage, which is recommended to be 26. Ah. But you can, with the electrostimulator, uh, make more, or less based on the tightening effect uh, which the patient can feel or the little pain during the procedure, you can uh, do less energy. Or you can more, do more if the patient doesn't feel uh, anything uh, and uh, if the results are a little bit less than the expected. So you can customize everything. So you're saying that you can actually, part of your treatment protocol is that the clinician, the ophthalmologist can adjust yeah, of, co of course, of course. Okay. So it's not a fixed yeah, regimen? It's not fixed, but of course uh, um, the, the protocol that I did, they, it was already on the same parameters because otherwise uh, I couldn't do the study to see the results because if I treat patient with 40 million pair of energy and I treat uh, one of 26, yeah. the results can be different, so I treated everybody on 26. But uh, this is in the study. But uh, what I can suggest to, to other ophthalmology when they start, of course, they can adjust the energy following, of course, the parameters of security. So don't go until 40, of course. Uh, stay between uh, 26 and 30, 32, 33. This particular innovation with direct contact through a contact lens is providing the required stimulation uh, to produce a significant clinical effect. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what are your next steps for this particular line of research and this product? Um, we would like to, to wait uh, for the, because we, we, we saw that uh, it works, so we would like uh, to, um, to make it work also for people more than 50 years old or to make it work uh, for, um, with the result uh, even better. So, uh, of course, uh, we cannot increase the energy. <laughs> so, uh, we would like uh, to, to wait for these uh, new drops uh, in the market uh, uh, rising, uh, which can uh, stimulate the, the fibers, uh, the, the proteins of the crystal lens, uh, reducing the linking, so make it uh, more flexible which in uh, conjunction with the electrostimulation can increase the, even better the, the results of one technique, that's to say the drops, and uh, the other, that's to say the electrostimulation. What, the, what are the active pharmacological ingredients of these drops? Which is the principle. Right. Uh, I can say, <laughs> because it's, in, it's not in, in the market yet. Right. It's, uh, 
Doctor, thank you for sharing this very important work and we look forward to following you and thank seeing you. your progress going forward. Thank you very thank much. You.